We started getting the news on the evening of the 26th and uh, as often happens in these cases um, the disaster, the damage was so intense that it took a long time for, for information to come clear and just to know what was happening. So on the, the first evening the, the numbers are still quite small so we were concerned um, and uh, it wasn't really until the next morning we realised just how big it was going to be. My role uh, during the tsunami, uh, I was based in the Melbourne office. Uh, I'm basically helping to coordinate the, the flow of funds that our supporters in Australia were raising and getting them out to our tsunami response projects in the field. From, from my side, I guess what I saw was the entire organisation sort of dropped everything and uh, just started focusing on this one response, which was very encouraging to see. There was this sense of community. Every part of the organization was just desperate to be involved. They were uh, passionate, really concerned about what had happened. None of us had ever seen anything on this scale before, both in terms of the needs of the people in, on the ground in, in tsunami-affected areas, but also in terms of the outpouring of generosity from the Australian public. The, uh, I think the tsunami for, uh, for World Vision and other agencies was a, it was a turning point. It was one of those life events in our profession uh, where we learnt so much about ourselves, what we're capable of, where our weaknesses are. Uh, we learnt so much through the tsunami. We learned about fundraising, we learned about the potential of the people to, to give, we learned about the need to be prepared, we learned about how we work with other organisations in the field. I mean, the United Nations and the way in which different agencies worked together was transformed as a result of the tsunami. We changed the way in which we did cooperation um, and we still see, you know, nearly 10 years on from that, we see great improvements in the way in which we do our work on the ground.